This episode of Techno Buffalo is brought to you by GoDaddy. Is the Amazon tablet coming this October and bring in a Kindle with it? A Kindle with a touchscreen? Is Windows Phone 7 launching the next breed of devices codenamed Mango this September? And was it leaked thanks to somebody's Twitter account? Europe's favorite streaming music service finally lands in the US. But is the US's favorite streaming video service in trouble? Why'd they raise their rates so much anyway? Blogger on blogger violence. Will it ever stop? This week, it's All Things D versus TechCrunch. There are a ton of new phones. John was in New York. I was in San Francisco. We covered a whole bunch of them. And what's in this box anyway? It's Techno Buffalo's Rumor Roundup. Hey, what's going on everybody? I'm Noah Kravitz from Techno Buffalo and welcome to the Roundup for today, July 15th, 2011. This episode of the Rumor Roundup is brought to you by GoDaddy. And unfortunately, I do not have a GoDaddy girl with me here to read that ad copy to you. I, I can try, but I'm neither a race nor car driver nor do I look like a race car driver, if you get my drift. Anyway, I hope you're all doing well. Busy, busy week, lots of new phones launched this week, lots of stuff going on. Let's get right to it. As always, you can get more, especially on all those phones that came out. The status, uh, those new Sony tablets were shown off, the MyTouch Slide 4G, all kinds of stuff going on, whatever's in this box. Uh, over on technobuffalo.com, you can, you can stay on top of all of it, including our own John Rettinger's hands-on coverage from New York City this week. So check that out after you watch this, because this is all about the rumors. The Amazon tablet. Maybe arriving at long last, but uh, it might not be arriving this summer like many of us hoped. Instead, the latest reports, latest rumors, have the tablet dropping in October. And it uh, looks like we are going to see two devices, but possibly not. You know, the rumors change every day, and the latest is that it may be one touchscreen tablet uh, based on Android, probably the gingerbread version of Android, uh, although it might be 2.2, and probably a single core tablet, not a dual core tablet, probably not with a camera. But honestly, I don't think all that stuff matters because Amazon's target audience, they don't really care about that stuff. They just want the thing to work and they want to use Amazon services. The books, the magazines, the streaming music, the streaming video, the shopping, all that stuff. And you can bet your bottom dollar that uh, you can bet your sweet bippy, whatever that means, that uh, the Amazon tablet will have access to all those things. I think we're going to see a big push around streaming video content. Amazon's going to keep uh, pumping up their Amazon Watch Instant or their Instant Video, whatever they call it. Watch Instant, uh, Netflix, I'm getting ahead of myself. Their, uh, their video offerings perhaps tied into Prime. But at any rate, looks like we're going to be seeing that device in October and with it, a touchscreen Kindle, uh, perhaps to battle the touchscreen Nook that uh, I think is the best e-reader out there right now. I love that thing. So uh, stay tuned for more. But but it looks like it'll be, you know, October, maybe for lucky September for the Amazon tablet and uh, a second device, probably a touchscreen e-reader. Speaking of mobile devices slated to come out this fall, an inadvertent tweet that was pulled down, or maybe it was planned, maybe it was like a little show entitled little, you know, a little flash and, and put it back in. That's, I shouldn't do that on camera anyway. By the way, this is my official NBA lockout protest sweatshirt, uh, just so everybody knows. End the lockout. Okay, enough of that. Uh, anyway, whoever it is behind the official Twitter account for Microsoft's Imagine Cup competition may have inadvertently, or on purpose, uh, narrowed down the launch window for the new batch of Windows Phone 7 devices to be running Windows Phone 7.5 Mango. Now hopefully, probably, in all likelihood, this will include the first batch of Nokia Windows Phone devices and could also include a Samsung phone that was also sort of, was it leaked, was it not, what was going on there, shown off very briefly at a Microsoft Partner Conference earlier this week. Uh, this phone looks a lot like the Samsung Galaxy S2, which is a super high-end Android device. Hasn't hit the States yet, uh, but launched in other countries and uh, just one of the hottest phones on the market. So a device like this would be huge uh, for Microsoft's Windows Phone 7 efforts uh, to go along with the $120, $120 million ad campaign that Nokia apparently is cooking up for, uh, for their part in the launch. But at any rate, this... Um, this tweet said something about how all Imagine Cup finalists will receive 
Uh, Windows Phone 7.5 Mango, the newest release, and they'll get their phones by September. So who knows? That could be pinpointing a September launch date. It could just be saying that uh, they're going to get current phones with 7.5 on them, or maybe their prototypes, or who knows what, but the tweet has been pulled down. Uh, you can get more information from our own Adriana Lee over on the website. But, uh, you know, we've been talking about a fall time frame for the official release of Mango, which has been, uh, you know, shown off and put in developers' hands and everything. Uh, uh, for a little while now. So, you know, fall release, September, all kinds of lines up. So uh, stay tuned for more on this story in the coming months. Moving from things that will be coming eventually, we think, we hope, to things that are here right now. I'm tapping on that box again. Spotify, Europe's favorite or one of their favorite um, streaming music services has finally landed in the US. Uh, just yesterday it went live. It's an invite only thing, a very small number of invites. Um, I got an invite and I had a link to uh, invite up to five other people and I posted it uh, on Twitter and on Facebook and people told me immediately, now nah, the link's dead man, sorry. So, you know, stay tuned for that. This whole, it's this whole exclusivity thing with, you know, Facebook started out that way and then Google Plus recently and now Spotify invite only, build a buzz, whatever. Anyway, Spotify streaming music with a ton of Facebook and other social networking integration. There's a free plan, there's a $5 a month plan, there's a $10 a month plan. Uh, the $10 a month plan gets you access on mobile devices as well as your desktop clients. Uh, also, there's Sonos integration, uh, some integration with other devices going on. So I am psyched, I'm gonna get this video over with so I can check out Spotify and uh, see if it really lives up to the hype, but I'm very excited to try it out. You can do some cool stuff, like you can you know, build playlists and share them with other people and that kind of thing. So maybe we'll have to get an official Techno Buffalo Spotify playlist going. So keep your eyes open for that. And of course, if you are a Spotify user, especially if you're not in the US, if you're in Europe and you've been using it, you know, definitely hit us up. Go over to the site, hit us up in the comments, or find me on Twitter, find the official Techno Buffalo account. Let us know what you think. Let us know some of the tips and tricks for us newbie American users finally getting to use Spotify. Speaking of American users of streaming media, Netflix announced price hikes earlier this week that have a bunch of people up in arms. Basically, uh, you can get all the details over on the site, but basically what they did was they took the model of uh, $7.99 for unlimited streaming plus uh, $2 a month for one DVD at a time. That, that was the base plan. That's the plan I actually have. So 10 bucks a month for unlimited streaming plus one disc out at a time. And they split it up and effectively raised the rates by 60%. So that plan now went from 10 bucks a month to $16 a month, uh, $8 for unlimited streaming, $8 for one DVD out at a time. Uh, and then they have another plan that's more expensive if you want two DVDs out at a time. Or you can just go streaming only for eight bucks, one disc only for eight bucks. So a lot of backlash around that, a lot of discussion, people up in arms that they basically, you know, raise the rates without offering anything new. And, and it was such a big price hike in terms of, uh, of percentages. Still, you know, 16 bucks a month for unlimited streaming plus one disc out at a time is a pretty good deal. Um, but apparently Netflix has just been spending a ton, not only on licensing the content that they put out and also developing their own content, but also the streaming costs themselves. So, uh, you know, it had to give because that was just such a good deal for 10 bucks a month. It, it had to give eventually. It gave now. Maybe the way they, they did it, not the best way uh, in customers' eyes to bring on that change. Existing subscribers won't have to move to the new price plans until September. So we've got a couple months to decide, you know, is it worth it? Do we just, you know, eat the cost? It's really only six bucks a month, depending on what plan you have. Or uh, do I go streaming only or DVD only and then spend that other money maybe on Hulu Plus, maybe on Amazon. Maybe I get my DVDs from Redbox now and, uh, you know, save a couple bucks by actually driving to a pickup spot. I don't know. If you're a big watcher of streaming media and uh, you get your discs through the mail as well, definitely let us know what you think, what you plan to do. Me, I'm cutting the cord. Uh, I am cutting the cord this summer and we'll see how it goes, but uh, I'm going to reroute some of the money I spend on my cable TV bill into more streaming media because uh, it's just not worth it, especially if there's no NBA. Blogger on blogger violence. It's got to end. Increase the peace. We're all in it together. Last week I talked about the war between X Engadgeters and, well, not really current Engadgeters, but Engadgeters Management, AOL. Another AOL property uh, in the, I hope this doesn't become a regular feature, but in the Blogger Wars segment this week, TechCrunch, owned by AOL, has a bone to pick 
with All Things D, which is the Wall Street Journal's digital blog. Uh, TechCrunch writer MG Siegler called out All Things D writer Ina Freed for running an article which basically referred to something that was posted on TechCrunch that Siegler wrote up uh, several weeks ago and not including a link back to the TechCrunch article. Now this is the second time in just the past few weeks that All Things D and actually the same writer has been called out for not linking back to original source. Uh, Daring Fireball, which is uh, Mac, uh, people call him a Mac fanboy. A uh, Mac enthusiast, shall we say, to use uh, all things D's language. Mac enthusiast John Gruber runs this site, uh, Daring Fireball, it's huge in the Mac community. And uh, he called them out for not linking back to a source on a Mac related article a couple weeks ago. And uh, just this week, just yesterday on Thursday, there was some stuff on Daring Fireball pointing to a post on MG Siegler's personal blog blog about a TechCrunch article that didn't have a link and once they were once all things I mean uh, all things D article linking back to TechCrunch it didn't have a link once it was called out all things D went back and added the link in but some name calling going on and all kinds of stuff I I'll tell you this I firmly believe if you're gonna source somebody you gotta link back to them that's how the web works that's how it goes um, but, you know, is there a way to, can we settle this privately? Do we have to call people out? Or do you have to be called out to, uh, you know, to change? I don't know. You tell me. But all you bloggers out there, make sure you link back to your sources and attribute the original sources. Because, you know, when you get that big scoop and everybody else is running it, you want their links back. That's how you grow traffic. That's how you grow audience. That's how it works. Get reliable, secure web hosting without the long-term contract. GoDaddy's hosting plans are bigger and better than ever with 99.99% .99 uptime, free 24-7 support, and no annual commitment. And remember, you can download GoDaddy's free iPhone, Android, or BlackBerry app to order right from your phone, manage your current domains from your phone, and so much more. Control all your account from your smartphone. That's the way you gotta do it if you're hosting websites in the modern world. Check out revision3.com slash GoDaddy for a list of all the amazing GoDaddy deals from Revision 3. And if you use the promo code BUFFALO1, that's the word Buffalo and the number one, you can get 10% off. And finally, as I said uh, a few moments ago, lots and lots of new phones this week, coverage on them on Techno Buffalo. Uh, I got the MyTouch 4G slide, T-Mobile HTC phone, did an unboxing of that, gonna be doing more coverage on it. John was in New York, got the, uh, the Facebook phone, the Facebook phone, the HTC status, I kinda wish they'd kept the name as Cha-Cha or Cha-Cha-Cha, but uh, the HTC status, also, uh, Motorola uh, and Sprint launch, now announced the launch date for the Photon 4G coming out July 31st. Uh, Sony and AT&T talked about those two new Sony tablets, the S1 and the S2. Uh, the S2 coming to AT&T. And um, what is in this box? I think you're gonna have to go to Techno Buffalo to check it out. I'll give you a hint though, it's a phone. I know that for sure from the return address. I'm smart that way. Anyway, lots of stuff this week in the world of mobile in particular. So head on over to Techno Buffalo to check that out. And of course, to get uh, all the latest rumors, because I'm sure by the time that this video is up, there's gonna be a new one. Uh, you know, who knows what. Uh, I'm trying not to say the I word. I guess I said it at the very beginning, but you can get the latest on the uh, I dot 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 rumors as well. So till next time, again, thanks to our sponsor, GoDaddy. Next time we do a GoDaddy sponsored show, I'm gonna see if I can get one of the Go GoDaddy girls to uh, do the ad read with me. That'd be fun, right? I don't know if I can get them to come out to my office. Anyway, I'm Noah Kravitz for Techno Buffalo. We will see you next time on the Rumor Roundup. Hello and what is going on everybody? I'm Noah Kravitz from Techno Buffalo and welcome to the Roundup for today, Friday, June. Hello and what is going on everybody?